note before we get into this video, I ended up having to film this video kind of in two parts because I filmed the entire video and as I was editing, you may have seen this on my community page, but as I was editing the video, I got to like the last like 15% of the video and all of a sudden I had no audio and I was like, what's up with this? I didn't know if like my headphones that I was listening to it on died. Yeah, no, apparently the wireless mic that I was wearing had died. So I had to refilm a couple clips. So please, I apologize if there, and you know, I put back on the sweater that I was wearing. So I tried to keep everything the same, but you may notice a difference in some of the audio parts of those clips, just because I'm not wearing the microphone right now. And so it may sound a little bit different and the lighting may be slightly different. Hopefully it won't be too jarring of a difference, but I just wanted to explain that before you get into the video. So enjoy. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lisa and I love to do videos on luxury handbags, shoes, ready to wear, some styling videos. And I do all of those things from the perspective of someone who is in the middle of her life, as well as someone who is mid-size. So if that's something that's interests you, I'd love it if you would, you know, join our little community here. It's a great place to chat about luxury items and things. And if you want to just, you know, click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. So, you know, every time I upload a video. So make sure you stay tuned to the end of this video. One, because I will let you know what is the number one item on this wish list. So what is the one thing that I really, really hope to tick off this wish list this year? And number two is a little surprise. So stay tuned. So as I am relatively new to YouTube, I just started my channel in August of 2022. I've never actually done a wish list. I've never done a wish list just on my own, like before. I mean, you know, I kind of know some things that I might be interested in, but I've never like formalized it, put it on a piece of paper. I've certainly never put it out into the universe <laughs> or uh, on the internet. So this is new to me and you know, we'll see how it goes. I, I'm not sure I like a hundred percent buy into the whole wish list thing. I mean, I guess from my perspective, I don't look at a wish list as a, these are absolutely the things that I'm going to buy in 2023. No, <laughs> these are some things that I've, you know, had interest in that, when I go luxury shopping, I always try on and, you know, just things that maybe I haven't bought yet, but that, you know, I think are beautiful and something that I might want to add to my collection. I think it's hard to know what you want to buy until you've seen runway shows, until you've seen new collections drop. And so I think I tend to be more of a person who you know, sees a runway and says, wow, I love that bag. And I absolutely want to try to get that bag when it comes for the season. Okay. So as I mentioned, I have a list and we're going to go over those. I think the way I'm going to structure this is the like first set of items that I'm going to go over are the things, like I said, that have kind of perpetually been of interest that I've really liked that I, you know, watch videos on that I've sought out in the store to try on things like that. And then I think the end of the video will do more of those sort of of the moment or maybe some sort of newer pieces that I've added to that list. Even though, like I said, I've never had a list before. So, well, like I said, we'll see how this goes. So the first item is the Lueve mini puzzle bag. I love this bag. I originally thought that I would want it in the small size. I cannot tell you how many videos I have watched on this bag, but I, I know 100% for sure that searching for the Lueve puzzle bag was how I found Karen Britchick. And I'll, I'll link these channels below if you have any interest in checking them out. And at the time that I was doing my research, I don't think that the mini bag, puzzle bag was out yet. And since I've been to New York several times over the last year, I've looked at them both at Saks and at Bergdorf Goodman. 
So I've seen a pretty good selection of them. And originally I thought maybe the mini would be too small, but it's actually a really good size. It actually reminds me very much size wise as the, my Speedy 20 does. Very similar. I think it probably will fit just about the same amount, which is actually a really good amount. And so I think that's one that I would really like to add. I love the way, you know, it eventually sort of starts to slouch in the middle, kind of gets that kind of curve in the center. And, you know, as cliche as it is, I probably want one in the sort of classic tan color. Although I did see, and I'll pop a picture up here, of a beautiful, beautiful green. It's very similar to the Bottega Parakeet green. It's just, it's gorgeous. So you never know, maybe if I want to go down that road of getting a green bag added to my collection, maybe that's the one it will be. All right, next on the list is the Cartier Clash bracelet. Now, when I first got my Justin Clou and my uh, Small Love bracelet, at the same time. And I bought these in September of 2021 when we were on our way back from Europe. So I bought them at the flagship store on Fifth Avenue. But while I was there, I tried on the Clash and I contemplated getting either just the Clash or, you know, getting these two bracelets together. It was about approximately the same amount of money. I mean, I think the Clash maybe was maybe like a thousand dollars less than the two of these combined, something like that. It's been a while since I've looked at those prices, but I love the look of the Clash bracelet. I've actually considered getting the Clash ring too, although I didn't put that on this list because I think that my first priority would be the Clash bracelet. And I just, I think it's beautiful. So number three is luxury outerwear. Now, I, again, have always had an interest in this, but I think that my interest in this is kind of been ratcheted up a little bit now that I'm moving to New York. Because again, you know, if you've watched any of my vlogs or, you know, vlog a day or whatever, living in Kansas City, you basically go from the garage of your house, you know, in your car, you back out of the garage, you go to the store, you get out of your car, you walk into the store, you walk back to your car, you drive back to your house and into your garage and back into the house. So, I mean, yes, obviously in the winter, you still have to wear a coat, but you, you don't really have, like, no one's really looking at your outerwear. You, it just doesn't have the same impact here that it does in a city where you do a lot of walking or taking public transportation. So my interest in luxury outerwear has, like I said, has definitely moved up the ladder since knowing we're going to be moving. And probably the top two on my wish list, or, and I don't know that I would get both of these. It, it might be kind of an either or just, but I've always had an interest in the Louis Vuitton like wrap coat. I don't know what the official name is. You'll be seeing pictures up here, obviously. I fell in love with it from the moment I saw it on Kara's um, LV Lover CC. I think she was the first one I ever saw get this coat, which frankly I find a little amusing because I think she lives in Florida. So I'm not quite sure when she really wears this coat, but don't get me wrong, like props to her for getting the coat because it's gorgeous. <laughs> and I think I'm pretty sure that Deb from Wild Unfiltered has like the shorter version of this coat. I didn't even know it came in a shorter version. I've only seen more like what I would sort of call the kind of mid thigh, mid to lower thigh length coat. And so that, that more like kind of jacket one, the one that kind of just, I think that Deb has only comes to like kind of just below the tush line. So I'll have to check that out the next time I'm in the Louis Vuitton boutique. Cause I've never seen that one in person, but I love that coat. It comes in different colors, I believe. And yeah, I just, like I said, I have loved it ever since Karis looked at it and bought it, which is probably at least four years ago, I'm thinking now. And then the other coat is the Fendi puffer coat. Now, in all truthfulness, I actually purchased this puffer last fall. So the fall, fall into, well, it was really the early winter of 2021. And this is actually really how I got to know my Fendi essay, Brandon. So I was working with a personal shopper through Neiman's who sourced it for me. And 
I needed to send it back. I got it. I loved it. But because of what I just said about living in Kansas City, I just didn't feel like I was going to be able, like, I just didn't feel like I was doing the coat justice and I wouldn't get enough wear out of it to get that sort of cost per wear for the jacket. It's around $3,300 for the puffer. It's reversible, so it is two for one. We, we, we love a value here. We love a two for. I needed to send it back and I don't remember if I couldn't get a hold of the personal shopper. And so I just called, I knew where it came from because obviously it said on the label that it came from Fendi in Chicago. And so I called the number and I got a hold of Brandon and that's the beginning of our love story. <laughs> Not really a love story, but the beginning of our, of our friendship. So, you know, he was just super sweet because we were going to be leaving and I think we were actually going to New York and I was like, you know, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it out. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. Like if you can't send it until, you know, after you get back from the trip, like don't worry about it because, you know, they have a 14 day return policy on those things. And anyway, that's when I knew I loved Brandon because he was just, he'd never met me before and he was already all about customer service and whatever he could do to help me. And it was not an issue that I needed to, you know, that I wanted to return it. And, you know, it's paid off, right? Because I've given him a lot of business since then. <laughs> so I purchased the coat, loved it. But like I said, just didn't think that I could justify the purchase. Well, now <laughs> going to New York and living there, it's it, again, it is very quickly moving up that wish list rank. I did try it on when I was at Saks and we were there in November and I almost pulled the trigger on it after, right after that. In fact, I texted Brandon right after I tried it on and I even took a picture of the tag so he remembered which one I wanted. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm serious. I seriously think this might be the next, you know, thing I purchase. Well, spoiler alert, it wasn't. You haven't seen the unboxing video yet, but you will see what I did purchase instead. So this might wait until next fall, but I, I think it's pretty high up on the wish list. So, you know, we'll see. I'll try on the Louis Vuitton one. We'll compare it. They're very completely different coats. You know, the Louis Vuitton one can definitely be more dressy. Uh, I think especially the shorter version like Deb has could definitely also be casual, whereas the Fendi one is 100% casual. You're not, you're not wearing that Fendi puffer, which is like, you know, like this. I mean, it's like... <laughs> Michelin man, but in black. You're not wearing that with a dress or a skirt. You're wearing it with jeans or leggings or joggers or whatever. Very casual, but very cool. The next items, and I'm kind of going to group these together on my list. They're four and five, but they they don't go together, but they're the same item in different colors. So I'm just going to group them together. And if you've watched my channel, these probably should be no surprise to you. Hermes Birkin in gold with palladium hardware and a Birkin in rose poupre with palladium hardware. So I originally thought that I wanted the Birkin, the gold Birkin in a 30. That's what my black one was in. I basically wanted its, you know, twin sister, <laughs> but I was able to try on some Birkin 25s when I was in New York this, you know, back in November at Fashion File. And I really, really like the 25 side. Now I knew I always wanted the Rose Poupre in the B25. That's the one that Tamara had. That That's where I fell in love with it. That's the one that Amelia has now that she was able to procure on Amelia Rose's closet. Again, all of these channels will be linked below. And I mean, I have just like when she unboxed that bag, I was just like salivating because it has been my dream, one of my dream bags for years, ever since I saw it on Tamara, Tamara's channel. So I might switch that, that gold to a Birkin 25. I would certainly still be open to a Birkin 30. And I think my chances being an offer in my, from my home store would probably be better with a B30 than a B25, because I think the B25 is still the more popular size. But yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Rose Poupre, I will have to buy pre-loved, but I would also be open to buying a B25 in gold pre-loved as well. 
and I, I'm just sort of trying to figure out because I know we're moving. Do I want to still shop at the Denver boutique? Do I want to change and, you know, probably shop at the packing district store? Although I have not been to the new flagship store on Madison that they just opened in September. So I will very much look forward to going to that store. I haven't had great luck at that store and not even luck. I just don't feel like I've had great customer service at that store. Whereas my experience at the meatpacking uh, boutique was much, much better. And I felt like I really connected with the, with the sales associate that I worked with the day that I was there. So we'll see, but I, I may, I, you may see some pre-loved unboxings coming from me, hopefully this year. We'll see. Like I said, the Rose Poupre will have to be pre-loved. I've been looking, you know, I, there was one that was just on Fashion File and I just missed it. Uh, I hemmed and hawed too long and that's what happens when you hem and haw too long as <laughs> things get purchased. So we'll see. But both of those are definitely on the wish list perpetually. Like I said, those will stay on the wish list. Like I said, none of these things are like, I have to get this in 2023, especially these ones that I'm talking about in the beginning, because they're ones that have been on the wish list for years and they are pieces that, you know, continue to exist. So it's not like there's an urgency to getting any of these. So the next item that's been on my wish list or something that I've been thinking about for a very, very long time is the Celine... I think it's called the Sew Sangle. Some people I think just refer to it as the Sangle Bag. Not really sure. Some people I think have referred to it as the Sangle Sew. I don't know which way it goes. It's something that's not in production at Celine anymore, but I have loved this bag since I saw it on Emma Hill's channel. And again, I will link all these channels down in the description box, but it is just an incredibly, like most Celine bags, understated, timeless, just great hobo bag. I love the way it looks just slung over the shoulder. I would be open to it in black. I would be open to it in the, I think it's called Amazon or Amazoni. Like it's a, like a dark forest green color. I would be open to it in taupe. I, I would be open to it, frankly, in a lot of different colors. And I've had this search saved on Vestia Collective for probably two plus years, maybe. So I get a notification basically in my email every time a new one of these, you know, hits Vestier Collective. And sometimes I open the email and I see what it is. And sometimes I don't recently, I probably haven't just because it's kind of been, I guess, not as much in the forefront of things I'm looking for, just because I've been pretty focused on Fendi lately, as you probably will have seen. But it's it's just a beautiful bag. The single comes in two sizes. I'm looking definitely for the larger size. I think it's like 13 inches tall. And the smaller one is like nine inches. So definitely want the larger one. But like, again, I just think it's a very chic, understated, just great grab and go bag. So the Celine So Sangle or Sangle So or however you want to say it will definitely continue to be on my wish list. All right, the next item and probably the next set of items are things that have recently been added, either one, because I own this item already and I want another color or version of it, or two, because I know it's coming from a runway collection and I'm very interested in the item. So the first one are a pair of Hermes Oz Mules in black. Probably with, yeah, I don't, I don't know what color hardware. I don't, I'm not sure that I care, but I have loved so much my Oz mules that I got back in, what was it, like maybe September timeframe, something like that, in that just beautiful sort of neutrally cream color with the rose gold hardware is just chef's kiss. Uh, I'll pop a picture up here of, I'm sure I have an Instagram, a couple of Instagram shots of me wearing them, but they have been like the, the first of all, they are incredibly comfortable to wear. They were not hard to break in, like first time wearing them, no issues. And two, I just think that they look really stylish. Like they're a great way and they're a, an amazing transition shoe. So 
it is really a three season shoe. And from my perspective, I mean, obviously you can't wear those in New York in the winter, you know, clearly you're not going to traipse through snow with the, your heels being exposed to the elements. But beyond that, spring, summer, fall, 100% would wear those, especially in that color, because they're just a really beautiful neutral and, and like I said, goes with anything. So I would love a pair in black that is definitely being added to the wish list for 2023. Next is a pair of Fendi hoop earrings. And if you watched my best purchases of 2022, you will know that my pair of silver Fendi hoop earrings was made that top 10 list. And I, I just love them. And since I have a pair of small gold hoop, gold tone hoop earrings from Louis Vuitton, I have the small Louise earrings, had the big ones, hurt my ears, sold those, got the smaller ones, love them. I knew I wanted, you know, a silver tone pair because I already had gold tone. So that's why I picked up the silver tone in the Fendi earring. Well, I love those so much that, and they also come in rose gold. So I sort of already dropped the hint in that, uh, best of 2022 video that the rose gold would be uh, probably coming to into my collection in 2023. So they are definitely on the wish list. So the next item is something that I missed out on from Louis Vuitton. I think it was, I think it was either the fall winter collection or I don't know, Louis Vuitton has like a million drops and I, I, I don't honestly know what they're associated with. This bag really had a sort of a love-hate opinion on social media. You either loved it or you thought it looked like a grandma bag. Well, clearly I'm not in the grandma bag camp. I love it. Hence the reason why it's on my wish list. I missed it. I like missed it by like minutes, <laughs> unfortunately. And I thought I had an online client advisor who... She thought she was able to get me one. There was one available like in Texas somewhere. And unfortunately, when she called the store, it had been allocated to a client already. So I missed it. But what I'm talking about is the Speedy B25 in the floral print. And like I said, I'll pop a picture up here. I just love this bag. I, I know some people think it looks like a grandma bag. And, and I, 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 I understand I understand the perspective and I, I understand why visually some people think that it, it almost looks sort of like a, when people used to refer to, refer to like carpet baggers, <laughs> but it, it does sort of remind me of like those old, old, like sort of suitcases that were like embroidered or, um, but it, they usually tended to have that kind of floral print on them, but I just love it. I love that it has sort of that bronzy gold look. And the floral, I think, is beautiful. So, yeah, you know, call me a grandma if you want. But that one is definitely on the list. Obviously, I will have to get it uh, pre-loved. Although I do know somebody who has it who may want to sell theirs. So I'm hoping that she will sell it to me. But either way, it's on the wish list. And we'll see if it comes true. Now we are into items that I saw walk the runway that I have an interest in. So, you know, these items don't exist yet. They haven't been released yet, but I would definitely like to see them in person and potentially buy them. The first is the, and I don't even know what we're calling this bag. Again, I'll pop a picture up here, but it walked the spring summer runway for Chanel and it's the like mini 22 bag. Now, you know, I have a regular size, the original um, medium size, because I guess the 22 does come in multiple sizes, obviously. I have the medium size, just the original black Chanel 22 bag, and I love it, and I've had no issues with it, and yes, I owe you a review video. If the Gabrielle and the Chanel 22 bag had a baby, and it stayed a baby, that's what this bag is. So it has like all those multiple chains and pearls. And it's, you know, it, it's hard to tell, but I mean, I think it's only maybe like, you know, this big. I mean, it's, it's a mini bag. I mean, it looks so maybe like, you know, 10 inches by six inches or something. I, I don't, I don't know. But anyway, that one is definitely on the list. Like I said, I have no idea how much it's going to be. I mean, if it's, you know, because of the pearls and 
chains and whatever if, if, if it's more than six thousand it it'll be a no go i'm pretty sure not a hundred percent don't 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 come for me if like if it's over six and i buy it okay and finally and this will be the last item of everything but also the last item of things that i've seen on a runway and have let my sales associate know that i'm interested in and that is the fendi in collaboration with Marc Jacobs baguette. So this was seen, again, I'll pop pictures up here, seen on the 25th anniversary slash resort runway. And it was the, it's specifically the one I'm looking for is the, I'm pretty sure it's in denim. And we saw it walk the runway in like a white and it was a, just a really oversized, it may actually be a large size, uh, both, Brandon and I have been sort of speculating on this bag as to, you know, is it only going to come in a large? Is it going to come in other sizes? What, you know, sort of what's the plan? So it was originally supposed to be released in January, but unfortunately back, I think it was maybe in the November, maybe even October time frame, we found out that actually this was going to be pushed to May, which, you know, as much as I would love to add it to my collection, probably is not the worst thing in the world <laughs> since, you know, I've bought quite a few bags recently and probably need to like cool it a little bit on the purchases. But this bag, you know, I, from the second I saw it on the runway and it's, you know, it's very Marc Jacobs. It says, you know, I think it says I'm a baguette on it. If I remember correctly, I haven't looked at the pictures in a long time, but you know, it's very reminiscent of his, you know, this is a tote bag from his own line and, but it's tone on tone. So it's subtle, it, you know, I am just, I would take it in a large if that's all it's going to come in. I would probably most prefer it in the regular size. I would also really be open to it in the mini size. <laughs> I'd pretty much be open to it in whatever size, but I definitely want the white one. We think it's also going to come in black, but yeah, I would prefer the white on white. All right, so now that you've heard all of the items on my wish list, what do you think? is the number one item that I want to add to my collection in 2023. Pause the video and comment below and let me know what you think is that item. It probably won't be any surprise, but for me, the number one item that I want this year is the Marc Jacobs baguette. It, you know, clearly is going to be a, you know, I don't want to say once in a lifetime, but I mean, it, it's because of collaboration, right? It's not going to happen again. So it's one of those kind of like, you need to get it now, or you're probably going to end up paying more on the resale market if you try to get it, you know, from a personal shopper or something like that. So Brandon absolutely knows that this is like number one on my wish list. that, you know, this is what I, one of the things I absolutely want this year. So he's very aware of that. I know he will take care of me. Definitely looking forward to get that. So, uh, yeah, I'll look forward to reading your comments and seeing if that's what you picked as my number one. And as promised, a little surprise. Not necessarily a surprise to those of you who have been with me for a while and know that I had planned on doing a giveaway, another Hermes giveaway, when I hit 500 subscribers. And I have done that, and so here we are. So just, again, a really heartfelt thank you to all of you who have subscribed to the channel and who, you know, continue to watch and comment and engage with me, you know, either in the comment box or, you know, through Instagram DMs, whatever it is. I just, this is exactly why I started my channel. And, you know, it's funny, my husband yesterday, <clears throat> we were in the car driving on our way to uh, like a holiday luncheon for his company. And he was like, so, you know, tell me like, why, what, what's your favorite thing about, you know, making these videos? And I said, it's the interaction. It's the, you know, feeling like I'm talking to a friend about these beautiful things that we all love. Right. And, and I think I said, you know, as I said in one of my previous videos, even though you guys aren't talking back to me, like directly, I feel like we're having a dialogue. Whatever it is, that's what I love about doing this and why I continue to do it because, you know, I, I'm, I don't make any money from this. I'm not, you know, it's, it's a hobby and, you know, I have a full-time job. I have two kids. I, I have a lot to keep me busy, but 
this is something that is a creative outlet for me, but also a social outlet for as odd as that may sound. So because of that, and because I am so, so excited and just honored that, you know, 500 plus of you have decided to come back time and time again, I wanted to give back to you. So this is the other item that I purchased back in, I guess, November, October, November, I think, uh, when I was in Denver, yeah, November, when I was in Denver. And so the first giveaway item, which was part of Vlog-A-Day, has been sent to its uh, recipient. So hopefully she's in another country, so it may take a while for it to get to her, but I really hope she enjoys the Hermes tray that I picked out. I think it's beautiful, and I would have loved to have gotten one myself. But this, or these, I should say, items are part of the beauty line. And I tried to pick some things that I thought were very, very universal, Honestly, it could be unisex and, like I said, something that everybody could use. So what I picked was the Hermes Cuticle Oil. Now, these are both products actually that I own and love. So the reason why I picked specifically the Cuticle Oil as opposed to picking, you know, a nail polish or, you know, something like that is that nail polish colors, one, are personal, right? You know. Not everybody likes a bright red. Not everybody loves that, like, a taupe color. Like, it just, everybody has their own preference. Secondly, some people don't do their nails. Thirdly, some people do their nails and they go somewhere and get them done and they get gel nails. So they don't want an, a regular nail polish. But everybody can use the cuticle oil and it is very, very high quality. I use it every day. It's a beautiful product. And, um, you know, it's a little piece of luxury. They're, they're you know... It, you could certainly get less expensive cuticle oil at the drugstore, but, you know, I just love the way all of the Hermes packaging comes. You know, they're all in the little Hermes boxes and they come in dust bags. I'll show you with the lip product in a second. But regardless of whether you do your nails or you go somewhere to do your nails or you don't do your nails at all, you still want healthy cuticles. So that is the first item. And then the second item is the um, lip balm. So I specifically got it in the rose tan, again, a color that I have. I thought about getting it in the plain, but this, I mean, there really is like almost no tint to this at all. So even a male, honestly, you know, could wear this and without any issue, you really don't see a tint to it, but it's just a slight teeny, 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 itty bitty hint of color. So again, the beautiful box, and I love how these come. It slides out like so, and it comes in this little tiny itty bitty dust bag. <clears throat> and as you can see, it's got that beautiful gold cap on it, and these all have the magnetic tops, which I love. And I'll just roll it up here so you can see, but it's a very, and you know, I know it's it's coming out dark, but, and I don't want to, I don't want to swatch it, obviously, um, because I want it to be pristine for whoever wins, but th honestly, the color is like almost imperceptible, imper, is that the right word? You can't really see it. <laughs> so that is the other product. And I also have um, a couple of perfume samples that I thought I would throw in as well. I put all the instructions down below, the timelines, all of that. So look for those instructions down below. And again, thank you so much for subscribing and your continued interest and participation in this channel. It really means a lot to me. So that's it guys. Those are the, I think 11 items on my wish list for 2023. Again, not really something that I ever have written down or really like sort of kept track of, but just, you know, a mix of those items that I've kind of always had some interest in and try on every time I go into boutique, as well as a few items that I've seen on the runways that are coming up that I have a lot of interest in. So let's see what I tick off the wish list from this year. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate it if you 
gave it a thumbs up. That helps the algorithm. And of course, if you haven't subscribed and are interested, we would love for you to join us here. So hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. So you know, every time I upload a video, I try to do at least two videos a week, but sometimes they come out on different days. So it's helpful if you have the bell notification. So that way, you know, actually when I upload something and wherever you are, as I like to say, I hope you are having an amazing day or evening, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.